Tonight, disaster in Quebec, the damaging effects of raging floodwaters. Whole neighborhoods submerged with more rain on the way. There was more water coming in than what the pump was pumping. And the second day of a frantic search. Grief and gratitude for Gordon Lightfoot. Emotional tributes to a Canadian treasure. His voice is so rich and, and, and there's something about it that you just feel like you're at home. Plus the blast outside Buckingham Palace. Good evening for me for the time being, as I think that was probably a controlled explosion. A tense takedown days before the king's coronation. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina, reporting tonight from London. Buckingham Palace, where there was a security scare just as preparations are underway for the coronation. Good evening, everyone. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but we begin with a scare of a different kind for hundreds in Quebec, driven from their homes by rising water. There's still intense flooding in places like Bay Saint Paul, where huge sections of roads are washed away. A state of emergency is now in place in at least three communities, and two firefighters caught in the raging waters are still missing. CTV's Vanessa Lee reports from Bay Saint Paul tonight. The river that runs through the town of Bay Saint Paul is raging and dangerously high. The brutal force of nature sliced this main road in half. I've never saw something like this here. It's uh, very uh, impressive though, to see the water everywhere. It's still not safe for hundreds to return home. At its peak, the river overflowed its banks. The water was so powerful, it lifted this deck and bar off its blocks, located several meters away. This is what's left of Chloe Gosselin's basement. This is normally my bedroom. And uh, yeah, my son's bedroom, sitting room. Yeah, I lost everything. Gosselin and her neighbors fled yesterday afternoon as water on the street kept rising. Last night, it went up to here. She says this all feels surreal. I was uh, kind of in shock. And in the middle of the night, my mind started racing, thinking about all the things I forgot to bring up, like my passports and my birth certificate. Still, she says things can be replaced as she thinks about the two firefighters who are missing, swept away in the fast-moving current while helping others. Specialized aerial and ground rescue teams have been scouring the area to find Régis Lavoie, who is in his 50s, and Christopher Lavoie, just 23 years old. It reminds us of the role of first responders. Sometimes we forget about the risks they take for us, says Premier François Legault. Those who have lived here their entire lives have never experienced flooding of this magnitude. They're hoping the worst has passed, but more rain is on the way. For the next 24, 48 hours, we're looking to have again uh, um, maybe, maybe 20, 30, 40 millimeter again of rain, so uh, it may be complicated. One of the main obstacles to people getting home is the washed out roads. It's too early to say exactly when all of the repairs will be done. Vanessa Lee, CTV News, Bay St. Paul, Quebec. Here in London, police were called into action about 100 meters behind me, where a controlled explosion was carried out after a man was arrested. <laughs> It happened just days ahead of the coronation, where massive rehearsals are underway tonight, providing a sneak preview of how the processions will look this Saturday. CTV's chief international correspondent, Paul Workman, on the preparations and the incident that investigators say is not linked to terrorism. Police cleared the roadway and grounds in front of Buckingham Palace after something suspicious happened just outside the gates. Yes, that we've got to evacuate even well, I don't this see how why we could possibly have to move. Broadcasters from GB News were on the air at the time and reacted with typical British reserve to the events happening around them. But it is um, good evening for me for the time being, as I think that was probably a controlled explosion in the background. Police arrested a man who threw shotgun shells into the palace grounds. His bag was then blown up in a controlled detonation. A few hours earlier, King Charles arrived at the Great Hall of Westminster, where just months ago he stood vigil for his mother. Oh, 
His duties today were much lighter, festive, pressing the royal flesh with British MPs and members of the House of Lords, who for the most part aren't invited to the coronation ceremony. Those MPs and those peers who are not going to be there on Saturday, this is their opportunity to ensure that they could meet His Majesty and Her Majesty. And we're off. Oh, I'm so excited. An American royal superfan with her tent dragging behind her was among the first to camp out not far from today's commotion. Happiness repeating itself for 71-year-old Donna Werner. I came for Will and Kate's wedding and Harry and Meghan's and the Queen's few couple of her jubilees. This is the front, that's perfect. Pitching her tent on a hard patch of sidewalk. You're so good to see you. Greeting old friends from previous royal adventures, and the finishing touch, a straw hat crammed with all manner of kingly, colorful stuff. And where she will sit with a friend, waiting for the first golden carriage to pass by. An anxious day then for people camped out here. British police said tonight there were no reports of shots fired or injuries. King Charles and Queen Camilla were not inside Buckingham Palace at the time. All right, Paul Workman, thank you so much. The Prime Minister will attend the coronation this weekend and spoke to the King today. We talked about Indigenous reconciliation, which is a priority of his. He'll be meeting with the Governor General and the heads of the NIOs tomorrow in London. Uh, we also talked about uh, uh, the environment, uh, the economy, all, all a range of things as, uh, uh, as, is, uh, as is right. And a reminder that this Thursday at 10 p.m., CTV News presents King Charles, The Crown and The Quarrels, ahead of the main event on Saturday. Our coverage of the King's coronation starts at 3 a.m. Eastern, midnight in B.C. Tributes poured in today for Canadian music royalty Gordon Lightfoot, who died yesterday at age 84. An international folk hero, he bridged genres and geography, connecting people in this country and beyond. CTV's John Benavelli Rao on how the world is remembering the legend. At the Mariners Church in Detroit, the bells toll today in Gordon Lightfoot's honor. The church bell chimed to the right 29 times. The same bells he referenced ringing 29 times in his song about the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Only today they rang 30 times, an extra to mark the musician's passing. I understand that there's an agreement to observe a moment of silence in honor of Gordon Lightfoot. In the House of Commons, MPs also paused to reflect on the loss felt by a nation. If you could read my mind. While rock giant Billy Joel performed another of Lightfoot's signature tunes, writing, he was a lifelong musical hero of mine, his songs were the heart of Canada. I would be happy just to hold the hands I love. So many remembering what Gordon Lightfoot gave us, especially in Aurelia, Ontario, his birthplace, where his passing has hit particularly hard. We played his music this morning. It was very moving. And uh, we just thought we'd come by. I'm sorry. My Saturday clothes. Over the span of six decades, Lightfoot sold millions of albums and was a source of immense pride in Aurelia and the country. He certainly um, was an inspiration, his songwriting, his, his music, and really his humbleness and his generosity. Among the tributes, Brian Adams tweeted, I'm gutted to know he's gone. The world is a lesser place without him. Anne Murray posted this photo and wrote, Farewell, old friend. While Getty Lee said on Instagram, Every time I ran into him, the first thing he would ask was how many gigs we'd done that year. He'd then proudly counter with the fact that he'd played even more. At age 84, Lightfoot had kept a touring schedule right up until last month when he announced upcoming shows had to be canceled because of health setbacks. It was beautiful. He never stopped writing songs. He never stopped singing. He never stopped playing. He did what he was meant to do right to the end. And the organizers of the Mariposa Folk Festival in Aurelia are now making plans to change some of this summer's program to honor Lightfoot's legacy. Omar. A true artist and Canadian icon. John, thank you. A controversial pastor has been convicted for his role in the border blockade in Coots, Alberta last year. Arthur Pulowski was found guilty of two charges, including mischief, for his role in the protest against COVID restrictions. 
He has also been a political liability for Alberta's premier after they were heard speaking about his case in a leaked phone call. I can ask our prosecutors, is there a reasonable likelihood of conviction and is it in the public interest? And I assure you, I have asked them that almost weekly ever since I got started here. Danielle Smith later said she didn't speak directly to Crown prosecutors. Pulowski still faces a charge of damaging essential infrastructure. Mandatory evacuation orders have been partially lifted in two rural counties west of Edmonton. And that means some people can start returning home. A fire ban has been issued in Edmonton after a string of furious grass fires. Sustained high winds and heat are making it hard for firefighters to fully gain the upper hand. And from the front lines of the war in Ukraine, we have the story tonight of two Canadian friends who died together on the battlefield. Today, a grieving mother and sister spoke about their pain and pride to CTV's Manitoba Bureau Chief, Jill Mackishon. In photos honoring Ukraine's fallen heroes, Canadians. Cole Zelenko, just 21 years old. Kyle Porter, 27. Two men who fought together, died together. They'd been in Bakhmut for weeks, fighting in one of the war's bloodiest battles. The only Canadians in their Ukrainian combat group, last Wednesday they were killed in a bunker under heavy Russian artillery fire. He kept most of it hidden. Mm -hmm. He was trying to protect us. Um, in fact, he had told me that they had left Bakhmut, um, but he, he hadn't. Zelenko was a soldier in the Canadian Armed Forces. In 2022, when Russia invaded Ukraine, he left Canada to volunteer. This was his second tour. He'd been back in the war zone since the end of October. He felt he had a lot of um, work still left to do there, a lot of unfinished business, a lot of people still to take care of there. I'm very proud of him. He did in 21 years with determination and courage what a lot of us can't can't do throughout our, our lifetime. The two deaths are believed to be the fourth and fifth Canadian volunteer soldiers killed in Ukraine since the war began. This man returned Kyle Porter's body to Kharkiv today. He wants the families to know how the Canadian men were saluted at the roadside by soldiers. Their boys were just loved, loved and respected. And um, this country thinks that they're heroes. Loved ones here in Canada are planning funerals in the weeks to come. And in a separate ceremony tomorrow, the Canadian men will be honoured in Ukraine. Omar. In what will undoubtedly be an emotional moment. Jill, thank you. Warring factions in Sudan have agreed to a week-long truce in a conflict that has now displaced more than 400,000 people. Past ceasefires have repeatedly failed to stop the fighting in Khartoum, forcing an exodus of refugees to neighboring countries. British citizens have been told tomorrow is their last chance to get on a British evacuation flight. Coming up after the break. I need my writers. I need them real bad. When Hollywood scribes go on strike, plus painting the town Wrexham red. Yes, I am representing the whole of Canada. Two celebrity owners celebrate a long-awaited win in Wales. Welcome back to London. After months of labour turmoil, more than one million healthcare workers across the UK have voted to accept a 5% pay raise. But the nurses rejected the offer. So even after ending their 28-hour walkout today, more strike action is possible. Late night television has gone dark tonight, resorting to reruns with film and TV writers staging their first strike in the Netflix era. CTV's Heather Wright on their demand for a larger slice of the streaming pie. Out of the writer's room and onto the picket line. Thousands of Hollywood TV and movie screenwriters are off the job today after talks with major studios broke down. As a union, we're saying, uh, pay us what we're worth. Negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents the major studios, as well as Disney, Amazon and Netflix, 
ended last night after the two sides failed to reach a new contract. The union wants more pay, but also changes to how they are compensated, as streaming has drastically altered the way shows are made. The industry has changed in huge ways in the last five or ten years that have made it increasingly difficult for um, screenwriting to be a stable middle class career. The WGA also wants greater protections for what role artificial intelligence will play in the future of screenwriting and regulations to how tools like ChatGPT are currently used. AI has no business in the writing of scripts. Late night shows will be the first to go dark with hosts like Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert off air until an agreement is reached. I got no show without my writer. How long this strike lasts will determine how big its impact will be, which could include a ripple effect north of the border and a slowdown for Canadian studios, where a number of Hollywood movies and shows are filmed. Really what it does is it pushes production down to the back half of the year and, and into 2024, so it would be unfortunate. The last strike in 2007 lasted 100 days and cost the California economy an estimated $2.1 billion. At this point, there are no plans to return to the bargaining table. Heather Wright, CTV News, Toronto. And like a scene from a Hollywood movie, here's footage of a spectacular crash in Virginia. Incredibly, no one was seriously injured. A police officer was on a routine traffic stop when a speeding car traveling in the opposite direction lost control and slammed into them. The officer was able to call it in. My cruiser was hit, driver was hit. I'm trying to check on injuries. The 17 year old driver got a ticket for reckless driving. Still ahead tonight. We all were very scared. An Airbnb discovery that's not only creepy, it's criminal. A group of B.C. women are warning others tonight to scan their surroundings following a disturbing discovery hidden in the bathroom of their Airbnb. CTV's B.C. Bureau Chief Melanie Neji on the weekend getaway ruined by unwanted surveillance. The Sunshine Coast is a dream destination, but the B.C. Haven turned into a nightmare for vacationing friends after they discovered something disturbing in their Airbnb's electrical outlets. The night we found the cameras like took a bit of a dark turn. Kennedy Caldwell says the group was celebrating a birthday when they found what appeared to be hidden cameras in two bathrooms. We all were very scared. Caldwell says the devices were tiny and her friend. Those are like obviously like intimate private moments. Melissa Wolfson says they were facing the shower. No one should have to like go on vacation and feel that they're, you know, Naked images are now somewhere online. The women reported the creepy cameras to the RCMP who are investigating. Like, we don't have the footage for sure, anything like that, but they did find cameras. There are numerous stories online about covert cameras found in vacation properties. Surveillance technology is becoming more and more advanced. Kristen Thomason is a lawyer specializing in surveillance. While voyeurism isn't new, she says the technology used is rapidly improving. Which makes this covert surveillance by individuals, like everyday individuals, uh, much more easy. As for how to spot potential problems, experts say start with a visual scan. Turn the lights off in the room and look carefully around. Cameras will often have lights on them. Also look for things out of place. Inspect outlets ensuring they're not blocked and explore reliable detection apps. You can use a network scanning app to see what other devices are on the Wi-Fi network. Cameras are also Wi-Fi enabled and will show up. Airbnb says it too is investigating and the Sunshine Coast listing has been suspended. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. There was an early morning scare for an elementary school principal in West Virginia. James Marsh was unlocking the dumpster outside his school when he realized he had company. Hard to tell who was more startled, the man or the bear. Fortunately, no one was hurt. As they say here, keep calm and carry on. After the break, we'll take you next door to Wales. Party time in Wrexham for Ryan Reynolds' championship team.
Welcome back to London, where the focus here is on the King's coronation on Saturday. But about a four-hour drive northwest of here in Wrexham, they had their own celebration today with a victory party, and a Canadian celebrity led the parade. We sent CTV's Genevieve Beauchemin to the Welsh city of champions. Welcome to Wrexham, indeed. Fans flooded the street, painting the town red. Celebrations that overwhelmed the soccer, well, football here, players. And on board the open top buses, the team's celebrity owners, Philadelphia's Rob McKelleny and Vancouver's Ryan Reynolds, actors who delivered a Hollywood ending for this team and this town. <laughs> Just means everything. <laughs> Franca de Sessa from Montreal has lived in Wrexham now for over 20 years. Couldn't be more prouder. That's why I'm here with the flag representing Montreal and the rest of Canada. Wrexham was once a down-on-its-luck football team in a down-on-its-luck Welsh town. It was dead. The town was dead. Completely flat. And the poverty, oh, it's terrible. And it's just put spirit back into the town. Two shirts worn by the women's team. The history of the football team is woven into the fabric of the town. Wrexham area was the birthplace for Welsh football. Um, Wrexham FC is the third oldest professional club in the world. The closure of mines over decades sparked an economic decline that was eventually matched by the decline of the local team. It spent 15 years relegated to the lowest levels of UK football. In 2021, the team's fortunes attracted the attention of the two superstars who bought it, invested in players. And this season ended with a championship win and promotion to the next level, the English Football League. They produced a docu-series about it all called Welcome to Wrexham, starring the team and the town, including the turf, the pub next door. Kudos to Rob and Ryan because they tapped into that really early, um, realised that if you get it right on the field, you get it right in the town and vice versa, and that's exactly what's panned out. Yeah, of course you can. The feel-good story put Wrexham on the map, attracting tourists and tourism dollars. Rob is from Philadelphia. We're from Philadelphia. Eagles fans, go birds. And the team is gunning to keep on winning, to keep making its way up, so that there'll be more parties like this. Big on the dead bird. There's no guarantee there, but it's clear football, the beating heart of this town, has brought Wrexham together. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Wrexham, Wales. Such is the power of the beautiful game. And that is it for us tonight as rehearsals continue well into the night for Saturday's coronation. For all of us at CTV National News here in London and back in the National Newsroom, thank you for watching. Good night and see you tomorrow.